Dr. Fizz on the first law of thermodynamics. This is your conservation of energy, which states that the change in energy of a gas is equal to the heat energy you pump in minus the work the gas does by expansion. Here we have gas in a chamber, initially at volume V1. The gas expands to volume V2, pushing a piston to the right. The work done is force times distance, and here the pressure, since it is force per area, the force can be thought of as pressure times area. Remember pressure is force per area, multiply by area, you get the force. Notice that the area times the distance d is the change in volume, delta V. So here's a nice formula that gives us the work due to the expansion of the gas, pressure times delta V, and in a plot of pressure versus volume, that gives us the area under the curve. The green region here is equal to P times delta V. Now we can write the, the change in energy as delta Q minus P dV, and we're going to apply this with a nice application using specific heats. The specific heat is a measure of how well a substance can absorb heat. You compare it with the temperature. In other words, if you put heat into a mass and the temperature hardly changes at all, we say that material can hold heat. If delta T is very small, then when you divide by a small number, you get a high rating. If the change in temperature is great, the thing goes crazy when you put the heat in, the temperature goes wild, then you divide by a large number and you get a low rating. Notice that we divide by the number of moles so that we can be fair to the substance. If you have lots of the same substance, well obviously you can hold more heat. So you want to take that into consideration by dividing by the number of moles. So that's a definition. And let's apply thermodynamics to that definition. The change in heat is equal to the change in energy plus PdV. And since the change in heat is taking place at constant volume, delta V is zero, and delta Q then is going to equal delta U. Now we know what U is for the ideal gas. So we will calculate for the ideal gas. U for the ideal gas is the number of particles times one half mv squared, the average kinetic energy per particle. Now remember that 1 half mv squared is 3 halves kT. Good formula to keep in mind. And the n here is in both cases to get the total energy. And remember nK is equal to moles times ideal gas constant R. So we go on to the definition. 1 over n delta Q delta T at constant volume. And delta U is simply going to be 3 halves nr delta t. We're going to divide by delta t and divide by n. That's our definition. If we uh, do that, the n's cancel and the delta t's cancel and we get 3 halves r. A nice result. The specific heat at constant volume for an ideal gas. Now let's find the specific heat for an ideal gas at constant pressure. It's the same definition, however, instead of holding the volume constant, we need to hold the pressure constant. Now we use a trick. We're going to use a trick here that we've seen earlier with a product of, of variables. But before we get to that trick, let's just try to set this up the way we set the previous one up. Delta Q is delta U plus P delta V. Delta U is 3 halves and R delta T and the P delta V goes along and 3 halves R is the specific heat of constant volume. So we have this formula and we wish we had a delta P out here someplace we could let equal to zero because we don't know about delta V. So here's the trick. The trick is to consider the product of the variables which is NRT according to the ideal gas law and take the delta of the product which is your product rule. You take the delta of one times the other plus 
the delta the other times the other, just flip them, so it's going to be PDV plus VDP, and that's also equal to NRDT from the right hand side, and by making that substitution, similar to the integration by parts kind of trick, you see, where you uh, do a subtraction to swap variables, so the one that we have here is PDV, that's going to equal NR dt minus the other one which is the vdp. With that substitution putting that into this for pdv we have the first term is going to be the same and we find the second term is two terms now and we can take the delta t out, factor it out, and factor out the n, so this is cv plus r, and we're all set up to apply the, the rule delta p is equal to zero, and then we can divide by delta t and get our answer, that's the trick. So we do that, delta p is zero, we divide by delta t, and we get this nice result when we divide by n also, number of moles, we get that the specific heat at constant pressure is equal to the specific heat at constant volume plus r. Very nice result for ideal gas. Let's look at a summary of all of our results here. PV is NRT, where N is the number of moles, that's the ideal gas law. The physicist likes to write PV is NKT, where N is the number of particles. This uh, formula, the equal partition uh, theorem, where each dimension, X, Y, and Z, for the kinetic energy, gets you one half kt, so one half mv squared average in three dimensions is three halves kt. The energy for the ideal gas is n, number of particles, times the kinetic energy on average per particle, and that's also equal to three halves n kt, where you substitute for the one half mv squared, three halves kt, and remember n times k, where n is the number of particles, is equal to the number of moles times the ideal gas constant. This is conservation of energy. The change in energy of the gas is equal to the heat pumped in, minus the work that it does by expansion, and it's often written with the heat on the left side for applications as equal to the energy change plus PDV. Then the specific heat at constant volume definition, delta Q delta T at constant volume and divided by number of moles and similarly for the pressure. Notice that you can never write a derivative of Q with respect to T or a derivative of work. These are not nice variables like regular variables like pressure, volume, and temperature. There's no such thing as the what is the work of the gas. See, work is done by a change, you see. You have to go by a certain path, a certain pressure as a volume, and that will depend on the path. So they're path dependent. They're not intrinsic variables like temperature, where you could say, what is the temperature of the gas? That makes sense. It doesn't make sense to say, what is the work of the gas, the W, or what is the heat of the gas? It's either a heat flowing in or a heat flowing out, or work being done to the gas or the gas doing some work. However, energy, because it's proportional to the temperature, is a good intrinsic variable. And here's the result for the specific heats. The specific heat at constant pressure is equal to the specific heat at constant volume plus R. And for an ideal gas, the specific heat at constant volume is 3R over 2. And for the constant pressure, 5R over 2. This formula is more general.